All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. Don't punch the lamp. It means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I have uh, I got a vlog planned out for you guys. We're going to go through this. I'm going to put I'm going to do that thing where I put all the timestamps here. I know I've been forgetting recently, but I'm going to do that thing where I put all the timestamps right here so you can see what's included in the vlog, what's coming up today and what might be missing. I think we have all of the segments this week. I think we're going to do a beer tasting this week. We definitely have some vape mail to go over. We definitely have some news and advocacy. I've got a retro vaping prepared. I've got uh, lots of viewer mails, comments of the week, getting to know Grim Green. I think it's a full, I think it's a full vlog this week. So welcome, welcome to the vlog. And before, look, I want to do two things. Before we get too far into this vlog, I want to say something. I want to say something finally about that whole Tony B, Vandy Vape, Vupu situation. And it's not that I believe that everybody's like hanging on my words, like waiting for, for a response from Nick, because I have a lot of thoughts on the subject, but I wanted to sort of uh, not have that knee-jerk reaction. I kind of wanted to just wait a little bit, uh, examine some of the evidence, which there's not a lot of it, but I didn't. I definitely didn't want to have like a knee-jerk reaction. So I just want to say, yes, uh, of course I stand behind Tony B. What happened? was awful and and no one should have their designs uh, stolen uh, period unfortunately this is kind of what China does this is an issue that US modders have been dealing with for years and years now it's a horrible feeling it's completely unfair to Doni B and it fe it's a horrible horrible feeling and I know exactly how Tony B feels I feel that same thing every time I see a goddamn recoil clone out on the market. The reasons that we have to keep our designs so secretive on the internet, like when we launched the recoil, the reason that we had to keep that so secretive and the reason we didn't show the deck right away isn't because it was some, you know, big hypey thing and it was some revolutionary, you know, amazing deck in an RDA, which, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the recoil has a great deck on it. But the reason that we had to be so secretive is because once China China puts all the pieces of the puzzle together, it's going to get cloned. Two weeks. It took two weeks for the original recoil to be cloned. Oh shit, I kicked my tripod, sorry. But yeah, I mean, I hate, I hate that this happened to Tony. I hate that it happened to him. Tony is such a great guy. I, I consider the guy a friend. I feel like I know him pretty well. We have spent lots of time together at multiple events, even just at the last ECC, him and, you know, a, a bunch of YouTubers like Stan, Tenacious TX Vapes, and Nick, and Daily Vape TV, and Daniel, DJ LSB Vapes, they all came over to the squad house, like, just to hang out, like just to come over and hang out and chill. That's how much I like the guy and I hate that this happened to him. I also really hate that it happened to Kent when his atomizers get cloned. I hate that it happens to us. I hate that it happened to Greg Stevens. I'm sure he just loves seeing the clones of his like Defiant Designs DS and TS squonkers out there. I'm sure he loves that. And this issue with Tony B and Vandy Vape and Vupu is a, a, a much smaller part of a bigger problem that is rampant in China. And I feel like once we travel down this path of holding Chinese vendors accountable for their bad business practices, I mean, going so far as to publicly slander them, publicly just destroy their mods on the internet. Once we go down this road, we had also better be ready to have the full conversation around China and stolen designs, and that is cloning. And keep in mind, this isn't all Chinese companies, but there are a lot of Chinese companies out there kind of ruining it for everybody else. We, we kind of have to let China know that if they want to be a part of our industry, if they want to be welcomed into our community, we have to let them know that we're not willing to put up with their constant thieving, stolen designs, shady business practices, and cloning. It's all part of a, a bigger issue, and that that is, that is where I'm going to leave that. So yes, I support Tony B. I'm not going to review any Vupu stuff until all of the truth of this is, is, is out there, and I would 
really honestly, genuinely love if we all really could kind of band together as a community and hold China accountable for these shady business practices. It didn't surprise me one bit when Tony said that Vupu was going to steal their, was, was planning on or he had known that someone was at Vupu was going to steal the design and release it as their own. I kind of went, ah, fuck, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what China does. It's not entirely surprising to me. Unfortunately, it's not entirely surprising to me because I've had my designs stolen and my products cloned as well. That's kind of just what happens, and I think we need to just not just let that happen, uh, not that let that happen anymore. Anyway, that's actually where I'm going to leave that. So after that, I do want to do my other favorite thing that I love to do in my vlogs where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I'd like to hear from Mike out of Ontario, Canada. Mikey P here from Barrie, Ontario, Canada. Yes, the provincial Mikey P. Hey, anyways, I just wanted to give you a quick shout out and uh, actually, uh, I'd love three video shout outs. First, uh, number one to my sister-in-law, Danielle. Uh, she lives down in Salt Lake City, and I was down there on vacation last Valentine's Day, and me, just turning 50, I had been smoking solid since I was 13 years old. Noticed how much I stunk when I came over to visit. None of them smoke. So she uh, convinced me to go down to the uh, vape shop and said, look, if I buy you a nice vape, a good quality vape, would you give it a try? Sure enough, that was the last day I had a cigarette, and I haven't looked back yet. So... First one to my sister-in-law, Danielle. Number two, uh, I'm so behind vaping that uh, I ended up quitting my my, my career. I, I worked in EMS for 25 years. Uh, I now work full-time for a vape shop called uh, Sig Vape. I'm totally behind their products and what they do for people, and I love helping people and getting them off of cigarettes. And finally, my last out is to you, my friend. I mean, I have been all over YouTube for the last year, and you and you are the only one that I watch. I watch other guys, and I can tell they are just, you know, they get their stuff sent to them, and they give everything a great review because... You know, they're supposed to be unbiased, but you know what? You're the only one that ever tells it as it is. I take everything that you say at face value, and, and I love you, brother, but I just thought I'd give you that one uh, for sure. So there's your shed out there. So anyways, yeah, just enjoying the nice blizzard we're having here. We've got about uh, five feet of snow up here in Canada already, but uh, yeah, it's been good. I just wanted to say thanks again. So uh, take care and uh, keep up the good work and keep up the advocacy. I'm, I'm you know, big advocate here uh, in Ontario and fighting the good fight. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Mike, you know what? Seriously, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I tell a, a lot of people. Um, uh, this is just a one man operation. And at the end of the day, I'm just a guy in a hat that really, really loves vaping. I'm a huge cheerleader of vaping and I, I really like to have, uh, I really like to have good, good vape experiences. You know what I mean? I like vaping. I like vaping good shit, Mike. So thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words. Absolutely. We'll do some shout outs for Danielle down there in Salt Lake City, Utah. Boom, you're shouted out. Bump that fist. As well as Mike's shop, Sig Vape up there in Ontario, Canada, absolutely. Everyone, everyone at Sig Vape. Mike didn't specify any names, so everyone at Sig Vape is shouted out. But Mike, seriously, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching the videos. If anybody out there watching right now has a video that they'd like to send in where they want to shout out some people, shout out their shops, shout out their families, whatever you want to do, feel free to send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject. Um, shout outs or actually I've never thought about this. I've never had to say mark your subject. Just put in the subject your favorite thing. Just put say hey this is your favorite thing and that's how we'll know that it's a shout out video. Um, I've got a, a long supply of shout out videos but I always like watching them. I always like having some on hand to throw out in particular vlogs. So yeah send those on over nick at grimgreen.com and what I want to do right now is shift gears just a little bit and talk about what I have been vaping. You can kind of see it on camera here. Here. I guess it's all kind of lined up, but first thing that I'm vaping, it's, uh, yeah, it's that Dwayne's, it's Dwayne's Rage 
Squonker box. Now, this is one of the final prototypes, not quite the final prototype, but this is one of the prototypes that I stole from him at ECC. Uh, it's not, uh, this isn't the final version, so that's why I haven't been talking about it very much, but I've been using it quite a bit, and I like it because it's branded incorrectly. The Omboy OC logo is never going to be right here, and I like that I have one with the wrong logo on it. But this has been just a real banging, powerful squonker. I've got it topped with that uh, QP Design Kali RDA, which if you watched my Kali RDA review earlier this week, um, the price that I had said was wrong. It's not 70 US dollars, it's 70 Canadian dollars, so it's actually a little bit cheaper. You're going to have to do the math on that, but it's a little bit cheaper than I had said it was in that video. Still absolutely loving this RDA. I have it set to that weird airflow that I like where I kind of cut some of them off and open some of them up. It's a real bizarre airflow, but it's an option on here for an airflow, and I really like it. It's my favorite. It's smooth. It's swooshy. The, these are some Fuse Claptons in here. I'm squonking on that apple. What's it called? It's an apple juice. Hang on. This apple juice is, is a stellar apple juice. Where did it go? Okay, well, eventually I found it. This is the Yami Vapor Juice, ju Jusu, Jusu, the name that I can never pronounce. It is apple and it's and it's banging it's just it's just a really good apple flavor i picked this up at ecc and i've damn near vaped half the bottle now just delicious this is a, a 0.13 dual coil fuse clapton at a very modest 73 watts but flavor vapor bruh it's good Uh, this combination of atomizer and mod and juice is really doing it for me. Really enjoying that one a lot. Um, no big surprises here. I still got my Kent vape going. It's that Og Vape VT200 with Ponyon Acid, which is in a glass dripper bottle because I've been on a glass dripper bottle kick lately. Topped with the TM24 because it's my Kent setup. Topped with the TM24. I switched out the band, though, to be that stainless steel, like shiny, chromy stainless steel band, and I think that combination looks very cool. DHD nub tip on top and this is it's a Kent setup so this is a 0.16 at 111 watts and this is one of the very few setups that I have where I'm not even willing to test it I always have to apply juice to these coils before I vape it and some other vaping situations you know like it's I feel safe grabbing like a mech mod and just giving it a drag without knowing if I have dripped on it because the, the wattage is much uh, it's much lower it's not this hot Kent build that if this was dry, it would probably instantly just burn. You know what I mean? There's a lot of leeway and some other setups I have, but with this particular Kent setup, I have to drip it right away every single time. Thankfully, it's Pony on Acid, 111 watts, and uh, I'm not even sure what to say. It's warm and it's awesome and it's my Kent vape. After that, still vaping on this Grim Green uh, Signature Tips SQ Signature Mods uh, Single 18650 Squonker. These are manufactured out of the UK and they are just radness. I've got it topped with that Entheon RDA with the full black Delrin top cap on there. This is a rad little combo. In fact, I like this combo so much. I've been using it so much that my only gripe with it is the squonk bottles on some of these squonkers is a little bit small, isn't it? Has anybody else noticed that? I plow through this bottle fairly quickly, and this is only a single coil at a really low wattage. It's like a 0.2 on a single 18650, so it's real low in the voltage and wattage department. So I'm not like cranking through like clouds bro clouds, like just a sub ohm tank where you just plow through juice. I feel like I shouldn't be going through that much juice, and it honestly just makes me wish that this squonk bottle was just a little bit bigger. Like I honestly wouldn't mind if this SQ was like an inch taller and it just had a long juice bottle in there that would really, you know, that would really up that squonking game. But anyway, this is loaded up with uh, Yig, just one of my favorite juices of all time and, it, and it's delicious in here. Oh, so good. You take that long, long drag. It's so good. After that, still been using this broadside Colverin combo with some Fiends frame staples in it. It's it's just it's just fantastic. This is a fantastic mech mod and a fantastic atomizer. It's loaded up with Freeman 1885, which is a 
custard flavor. In fact, as soon as I get through this Freeman, which there is not there is not much left in here, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to that uh, Turkish blend, just because I'm still I really like this custard. 1885 is a really good custard, and it kind of is like got me on a little bit of a custard kick, and I'd really like to revisit that Turkish blend, that Turkish custard, just because I don't think I've had it in a while. I think it's been a few months. It might almost be a year since I've had that Turkish blend. I've been vaping a lot of the Turkish maize, but I really want to jump on that Turkish blend train again. Anyway, um, this is just overall unbelievable setup. I mean, a mech mod with a glass dripper bottle, it, it's my favorite. It's my favorite way to vape. Wonderful. That is wonderful. And I love, I love, okay, this isn't a review for the Culverin or the Broadside, but I just want to say one more time, loving, loving the drip tip on top of the Culverin. It's just, uh, just beautiful and comfortable. After that, I've got my blue double barrel Squid Industries double barrel version 2, version 1.5, version 2, I believe. I believe this is the version 2. It's topped with what we set up in last week's vlog, the Aquitus atomizer. I think that's how you say it. I know I have a correction coming up later on how I pronounce it, but I believe it's Aquitus. Not quite sure. Really, really loving this as a dripper. I haven't got to try it yet as a squonker atomizer, but I am loving it as a dripper. It is a layer juice right through the middle. DHD tip on top. This is loaded up with Bro Trip, and I believe this is a fairly high wattage. This is almost a Kent vape. This is a 0.16 at 90 watts, and the vape that I get from this atomizer is wonderful. This atomizer is just winning me over. The more that I use it, the more that I re-wick it, the more that I use it, it just, it's continuously, continuously winning me over. Rad. Oh, that's a good vape. I'm going to have one more. Why not? And then lastly, I got another mech. This is the Ronin Competition Mech Mod. Only It's only an 18650. There's no 21700s or 2700s options for this. Single 18650, gold recoil rebel on top, DHD macaron, and this is loaded up with uh, Savage E-Liquid Raspberry. And uh, because I have to be open and honest with everybody, Savage E-Liquid is a sponsor of, uh, of the Culture of Clouds podcast. They pay us money in order to advertise on the Culture of Clouds podcast. Podcast, and occasionally we try some of the juices that they sent along. And most recently in the last episode, we tasted this raspberry cookie. This juice is called Quinn from Savage E-Liquid and it is banging. It is my favorite Savage E-Liquid that I've tried so far. I was a big fan of the Marcellus. In fact, Casey was a huge fan of the Straw Nanner from Vape 100, which is also manufactured by Savage. But I think so far this Quinn, this raspberry cookie, it is my favorite Savage E-Liquid. So shout out to Savage E-Liquid. But once again, they are a sponsor of the podcast. So I make money off their advertising. I feel like I need to. I feel like I need to disclose that. Absolutely. But this juice, I, there's no way around it. This juice is just banging. It is scratching me right where I itch because I constantly go back and forth between like fruity flavors and bakery flavors. And when I'm in the mood for a bakery flavor, I really want a good bakery flavor. And when I'm in the mood for like fruitier flavors, like a fruity flavor, like that Pony on Acid or Bro Trip or something like that. I want something real fruity. This juice somehow manages to, bo to do both of those things really very well. And this isn't, uh, I'm sorry, this isn't a Savage E-Liquid juice review, but it's it's raspberry, it's a natural raspberry, and, and it's cookie, it's like a, a sh it's like a, it's like a shortbread cookie and raspberry. It's, it's almost the best of both worlds. It's fruit and it's bakery and I just can't get enough. Just can't get enough. And also a very, very dead battery in here. I actually kind of look forward to a dying battery in mechs sometimes. That's how I've learned to love mechs is the fresh battery in there. You get that nice warm vapor performance. And as your battery kind of trails off, you kind of have to translate transition into that like 
squonking mode where I take a long, slow drag and you get just that big, big, dense cloud of vapor. Anyway, that is what I have been vaping. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to shift over to the desk. It's time for some news and advocacy. Pew, pew. News and advocacy, yeah. All right, so we're here to do some news and advocacy. And the first little news tidbit that I wanted to mention in this vlog is I got an email from Stan, Mr. Tenacious TX Vapes himself. And he said, sent me this. It's a screen capture of what someone posted on Facebook. And I don't know the person that posted this. So I can't verify really that any of this information is real. I have no reason. I'm assuming this is an acquaintance or a friend of Stan on Facebook who posted this and he screen captured it and sent to me. But at least I find it, I find at the very least, I find it really interesting. Anyway, someone named Rob on Facebook posted this. Attention, please share as much as possible. If you are attending vape event, new New York, you may or may not have been contacted by CNN about participating in an interview. It has recently come to my attention that this news is anything but fair and non-biased, is an intentional smear campaign laced with cloud comps, bad flavors, and any negative sound bites that they can put together. If you are attending, I urge you to contact the show organizers and express your desire that CNN be stripped of their press credentials for this show. If this is not done and you are contacted or approached by CNN, I urge you to very politely and respectfully respectfully respond, no comment, and leave it at that. These people are not here to help the industry. Please excuse any spelling or grammar errors as I shot this on my mobile. Please excuse any spelling or grammar errors as I shot this out on my mobile. So that's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Mainstream media news outlets like to cover things that are shocking and alarmist. And so I can really kind of already picture what CNN is putting together from this. And this this is something that has, has happened in the past at events as well as local news companies and, and not, not on a national scale, not like CNN or MSNBC or anything like that, but small local uh, news affiliates have come to shows, interviewed people, filmed vape models in bikinis and filmed uh, people blowing clouds and filmed trick comps and, picked, and you know had shots of all of these flavors and all of these people vaping and then turned it into something completely, completely negative. It was total, utter smear campaign. This is something that happens. So if this is true, and even if this is not true, we're still getting some good advice. If you're ever at a vape event, just no comment. Just don't talk to the press. Don't talk to the media. I want to get vaping in the public eye, our vaping, you know, persona, how we appear to the public. I want our image to be better. And the only way that we're going to get it to be better is to not talk to things like CNN. Even some local news media outlets can really twist stories around and make vaping, even though this convention is a great thing. I'm sure vape event in New York, I'm not able to attend, but I'm sure it's going to be a great event. I'm sure it's going to be real fun. I'm sure there's going to be great vendors there. And it is also completely possible that a news outlet like CNN with the intention of running a smear campaign would show up and would possibly do something negative to harm vaping. I, I hate to think that. I hate to even believe that. I, I would honestly genuinely love, love, love if CNN showed up and did a positive piece on vaping and focused on how we're ex-smokers and how this is tobacco harm reduction and talk about the science of it rather than, hey, there's this guy blowing big clouds. Doesn't that look bad and annoying? Anyway, just something there. Just thought that was really interesting. Just a heads up for anybody at Vape Event New York. In fact, if anybody is going to Vape Event New York, um, please let me know and let me know if if you see CNN there. I would love for this to actually be a substantiated kind of thing that's out there on Facebook. If anybody goes and sees CNN or actually talks to CNN, which don't talk to CNN, but if you see CNN there, let me know. I, I would really love to know. I would really love to, to know the follow up to this. So we we do have a meanwhile in the UK news thing, but I did also want to talk about this real fast with the FDA. Uh, a lot of people sent me this article. Uh, the, the article that I'm using was sent over to me by a gentleman named Lee. So thank you, Lee, for sending this my way. But this is an NPR article, and I'll post links 
don't worry, down in the description to basically everything I talk about in the vlog. I, I miss stuff constantly from time to time, but I try to get it all down there. At, at least, you know, the most important stuff like the news and advocacy. I might forget to put like where this certain liquid came from or where like this certain drip tip came from, but the news and advocacy will be there down in the description and I'm going to post a link to this as well. Like I said, this is from NPR.org and the big headline on it is the FDA advances plan to slash nicotine in cigarettes. This is new FDA uh, appointed director of the FDA, Scott Gottlieb. The, he is rolling this out to reduce the nicotine in cigarettes, which to any normal person, you would just go, oh, well, that's just going to make people smoke more, right? The Food and Drug Administration genuinely believes that cutting the nicotine in cigarettes will get people to smoke less. And I'm not just sure if it's like a, a fundamental misunderstanding of the way cigarettes and nicotine addiction works, but the reason that people smoke is to get their fix of nicotine. They aren't looking for tar or, you know, a horrible other hundreds of thousands of chemicals that they use in cigarettes. No one goes out on a smoke break and says, God, it's been a while since I've had some tar. I definitely need that tar. People smoke cigarettes to get their nicotine fix. And if they are not getting that nicotine, if it's not satisfying to them, they are going to smoke more. This is actually a thing that's being rolled out, rolled out by the FDA. The article says, despite years of aggressive efforts to tackle the leading cause of preventable disease and death in the United States, tobacco use, largely cigarette smoking, still kills more than 480,000 Americans every single year, FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb said in a statement. Given their combination of toxicity, addictiveness, prevalence, and effect, a non, an effect on non-users, it's clear that to maximize the possible public health benefits of our regulation, we must focus our efforts on the death and disease caused by addiction to combustible cigarettes. I, you know what? I absolutely actually agree with basically half of what Scott Godlib said there. Yes, they are toxic, they are addictive, they are readily available, and they do have an effect on non-users. The, the clear path to preserving public health is to get people off of cigarettes. That's what we need. That's what we need to do. And maybe Scott Gottlieb just isn't looking at the numbers, but I have a feeling, I mean, I have it on good authority that vaping is a clear, brilliant pathway to tobacco harm reduction, not cutting the nicotine in cigarettes. It says the FDA hasn't decided exactly how much it will cut the nicotine or how quickly, but the goal is clear. In a federal register notice that is expected to be published Friday, the agency said it is considering developing a proposed product standard to make cigarettes minimally addictive or non-addictive by setting a maximum nicotine level. So I'm just going to throw some anecdotal evidence out there. In my experiences with nicotine and feeling satisfied by nicotine when I vape something like real high nick, like let's say a pod system or like a K-Fun with like 18 milligram in it. I will vape it and vape it until I feel satisfied and then I will stop vaping it. And with a high nicotine juice, you vape less. I vape way less with a high nicotine juice. This is why I can take a, you know, 50 milligram Nick Salt pod system to Disneyland, only vape a few times throughout the day and still feel completely satisfied because I'm getting the amount of nicotine that satisfies me so I vape less. Alternatively, when I'm here in my own house and I'm in my own office or I'm at a vape event and I'm vaping very, very, very low nicotine, I'm vaping three three milligram nicotine, I will vape a lot, lot, lot more because the nicotine is lower and it's going to take me longer to reach that level of satisfaction. And of course, this is all just anecdotal evidence. That's, that's my takeaway from this. I think this is a really very bad, dumb, 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 dumb decision from the FDA. I don't think we need to cut the amount of nicotine in cigarettes. I think we need to support vaping and get people going away from tobacco cigarettes to a much less harmful alternative. 
lowering the nicotine in cigarettes is only going to make people smoke more. And, I, and I'm pretty sure I'm repeating myself at this point, but I'd like to say it again. I think cutting the nicotine in cigarettes is really just going to make people smoke more. And that's, that's on the FDA if that happens. And here's, here, here's my favorite part. This is the best part of this article, and this is where I'm going to leave it. The announcement today is potentially the most significant public health step the Food and Drug Administration has taken in decades says Matthew Myers, who heads up the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids is funded by Big Tobacco. So of course Big Tobacco is excited about this because they know that cutting the nicotine is just going to make people smoke more cigarettes. Big Tobacco has a lot to gain from this cutting of nicotine in terms of more cigarettes sold. I really hope I'm wrong about that, but I honestly don't see any other way out of it. Lower nicotine, people are going to smoke more. Big Tobacco is going to be selling a lot more cigarettes. Gotta love that government tobacco tax money revenue coming in. And so one last news item that I wanted to talk about, this is going into the Meanwhile in the UK segment. Um, a few people, including uh, Andy from Ohms Distro, shout out to Andy, Ohms Distro, check him out if you're in the UK. But Andy from Ohms Distro sent this over to me as well as a lot of other vapors in the UK. And this is an official publication. This is on the website, parliament.uk. Okay, this is an official government website, and it's a bill. This is Bill uh, Bill 59, HC Bill 59. And what I believe from reading through this, I believe what HC Bill 59 is going to accomplish is that they are going to repeal a lot of the TPD framework that is currently in place. So things like uh, limit on tank capacity, limit on uh, bottle sizes, limit on nicotine strength. Lengths, a lot of this is getting repealed because the UK wants as many people vaping as possible. And they think that this current TPD regulations are too strict. They think they are too stringent and they want them rolled back in order to make vaping more accessible to people. And this is the full bill in front of me. So I'm going to read section one here that says electronic cigarette deregulation. Section one, part one, the tobacco and related product regulation 2016 will be amended as follows. Part six, electronic cigarettes is revoked. Part seven, electronic cigarette advertising is revoked. Part four, in the title of regulation 47 omit and electronic cigarettes. They are basically scrubbing the TPD of any terminology that mentions electronic cigarettes. In paragraph eight of regulation 47, cross-border distances, sales of tobacco products and electronic cigarettes, et cetera, et cetera, after tobacco product omit and electronic cigarettes or refill container. So if I'm reading this correctly, and I believe that I am, and I'm gonna let everybody else read it out there as well, I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description. The vibe that I get from this is that they are scrubbing the TPD terminology, the TPD language of anything that has to do with electronic cigarettes. And that could either mean that they're going to, you know, uh, regulate them heavier or what I think they're going to do and what I've heard word around the campfire is that they believe that the TPD is too strict, too rigid, and they want more people vaping. So they are scrubbing the TPD of any terminology that includes electronic cigarettes because it is the tobacco product directive. And in the UK, vaping is not a tobacco product. They are going to make it its own electronic cigarette product and regulate it as such, not as a tobacco product. I, I love this. I find this really fascinating. Fascinating. Um, I'm not in the UK. I don't. I don't follow all of the UK. How things work over there with regulations and bills and Parliament and things like that. But I believe this is a really great step in a really great direction. And I think that vaping is only going to flourish more in the UK. There will be less and less and less smokers in the UK. And I really hope they go through with this. I would love if they pulled all electronic cigarette language out of the TPD. I think that would 
would be fantastic if anybody is in the UK and I'm not paging, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily paging vaping biker again, but if anybody is in the UK and you have a little bit more information or you can maybe shed some light on what's going on over there with the TPD and why they're removing all this electronic cigarette language out of it, I would love to hear from you. Throw a comment down below of this video because I would like some more information on this because as it stands, the only place that I've seen this information is in this particular PDF bill that I was sent over. I can't find it anywhere else. I can't find any other news sources talking about this, vaping or otherwise. But I feel like this is a pretty big deal and I wanted to make sure we covered it. So yeah, big changes, big, big changes coming to the UK, coming to the TPD over there. Um, I did have a couple other things that I wanted to talk about, but I don't want this news segment to run too long. So we are going to save those for next week. We're going to talk about uh, when you get a reply from a senator, how to kind of decode that and what that means, as well as there's another update on the lost art lawsuit against the FDA. And uh, I want to give a quick shout out to William. William sent me over a bunch of links that I'm still kind of, uh, you know, uh, going through and reading up on and trying to get all the evidence before I'm comfortable talking about it. But thank you, William, for those links. And that stuff is coming up later as well uh, in a future news and advocacy segment. I'm going to end every news and advocacy segment the same way. If you want to get involved, if you want to do something, if you want to defend your right to vape here in the United States, go to kasa.org, get involved, get involved with an advocacy organization, follow the calls to action, stay aware of what's going on with vape legislation in the United States. Today is March 22nd, which means that the Cole Bishop Amendment is getting voted on today. That bill, that Cole Bishop, you know, government funding bill is getting voted on today. I don't know the outcome yet, obviously. I haven't seen anything. If anybody has any updates for it, I would love you to put it down in the description below so I can pin it to the top so that information is readily available on this vlog. We advocated as much as we possibly could. We got August 8th out there as much as we possibly could. And now that it's getting voted on, then now we kind of just really have to sit and play the waiting game to see what happens. And if Cole Bishop does not pass, if it, if it gets removed from the bill or if it gets voted down from the bill, keep in mind that that is obviously not the end of the world. That's not the end of vaping in the United States as we know it. There are lots of pathways we have regarding the FDA and vaping in the United States. And right now, the Cole Bishop Amendment is the most viable pathway to changing that predicate date. But if it doesn't pass, that doesn't mean that the sky is falling. That doesn't mean to panic. That doesn't mean to cl close up shop and close down your vape business. That just means that we need to explore another pathway pathway to keeping vaping safe, legal, and accessible to all adults in the United States. Anyway, sorry, that got a little soapboxy. Uh, sorry. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump in a time machine. We're going to go upstairs and we are going to taste some beer. Oh, good Lord. Okay, I'm, I'm losing both my light and my battery is dying. So we are going to try to get through this juice, juice, beer tasting as quickly as possible. So the beer we're going to be tasting today, this beautiful can. This is actually a really cool can. I, I like the graphics on this. Two Roads Brewing, Too Juicy, New England style IPA. This is an 8.2% IPA that uh, I believe this was an Eric Vinyl and Vapor beer. I believe this is, yeah, I believe this is the last Eric and Eric Vinyl and Vapor beer that I have. So I'm just gonna drink it right out of the can. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pour it into a pint style glass, I guess. That's what that's what this is, right? It's like a pint glass, like a pint pub glass. Or in real nice and colorfully orange, real crispy white head on there. It's a little bit translucent. Can't really see through it. It's a little bit cloudy, although I know I don't know if I would call this a hazy IPA. 
And you know, I, I always say that I dislike IPAs so much, but I come to the conclusion, and Ruby Roo can vouch for me on this, I come to the conclusion that I actually do like IPAs, like, like quite a bit. The problem is I can't have too many IPAs at the same time. If I have more than like two IPAs in a row, my palate instantly hates me and goes, nope, nope. Get, get something else in here quick, Nick. Um, I did bring up some juices, some vapes to pair it with, although I'm not sure how either of these are gonna go with an IPA. What I need is a good IPA pairing juice. In fact, if anybody out there that's into this here beer segment on the vlog, if you have a good, uh, pardon me, if you have a good juice that you normally generally, you know, uh, pair, I'm full of gases at the moment out, come out of me. If you have a juice that you pair with an IPA, I would actually really like to know about it. Anyway, oh, the sun's dying, my battery's dying. This is gonna be a calamity. Anyway, cheers, here's to you guys. Let's try this out. Wow, it's uh... Okay, so I don't know what a New England style IPA means. Right now, comparing this IPA to IPAs I've had in the past, this one is substantially sweeter than other IPAs, and it's less IPA-ish. It's less, I, I hate to use the term bitter, but I kind of feel like it's less bitter. Yeah, I get that like, uh, I get that like hoppy, really very hoppy aroma. I get that hoppy IPA flavor. It is very juicy. It's a juicy IPA, but I'm just noticing it, it's sweet. It tastes sweeter than a lot of other IPAs I had, including uh, Pliny the Elder, which is like, you know, the IPA, which by the way, I only have one bottle left of the Pliny the Elder, and uh, an IP this is an I you know, IPAs aren't something that you sell her, so I, I need to drink that sooner rather than later. But it's not about that. Good Lord. Okay. Too juicy. Keep it juicy. Uh, it's good. It's very refreshing. It's very IPA-ish, although a little less bitter than some that I've had in the past. And, it it's, and this one in particular tastes a little bit sweeter to me as well. It's good. There's almost like a, there's almost like, I want to say like a pineapple-y type of flavor that I'm getting from this. Pineapple-y or maybe even banana-y. Okay, well, I gotta know what they say on Beer Advocate. Two Roads Brewing Company. Okay, so over there on Beer Advocate, it's got a four and a half, 4.1 out of five, brewed by Two Roads Brewing Company out of Connecticut, United States, Two Roads Brewing dot com dot com. Uh, they just describe it as an unfiltered double IPA with pineapple and mango added. Fucking pineapple! I tasted it. I can't believe that. My palate, it's it's still you know it's still in pretty good uh, still in pretty good condition from my days from my years as a coffee taster. Pineapple and mango added. Okay, I, I didn't get much mango, but we're gonna revisit this. You know, that review's too long. Slightly hazy yellow color, light amount of visible carbonation or effervescence. Poured with a you know, head, moderate aroma. Citrusy hops are present in the nose. Orange seems to stand out in particular. The taste follows the smell. Has strong flavors of orange citrus and the hops, along with a light amount of bitterness. Light amount of bitterness. It feels medium bodied on the palate and has a moderate amount of carbonation. No bitterness is perceptible. The beer is surprisingly not bitter for an IPA. It definitely lives up to its name. Very juicy. Yeah, I would say something very, very similar to that. And I am losing my light. Good God, this is going to be a bitch and a half to edit, man. I apologize in this segment. My, my, my video is going to be jumping quite a bit because the sun's going down and that always makes it really fun to edit video is when you're slowly losing your light. But what I brought up here to taste today with this beer is the Broadside Culverin combo with the 1885 Custard because for some reason I always get it in my head that custards are going to be, oh, just the, you know, just the best beer pairing juice. And that might be true for some beers. It is definitely not not not, not, not going to be true for this IPA, but eh, what the hell, let's give it a try. It's up here, right? We might as well. Okay. Yeah, that's horrible. It actually made my vape liquid taste worse. I inhaled this 
and it tasted like that wonderful Freeman 1885 custard. And then as soon as I took a sip of this, my vapor instantly started tasting like Play-Doh, which is something that I have never experienced before. And it's just really weird with those contrasting flavors. That was so bad. That was so bad. I don't even want to try it again. That might be the single worst beer pairing, vape beer pairing that, that I have ever done. But Thankfully, I did also bring up Bro Trip in the That Atomizer, sitting on top of the Squid Industries double barrel, the Aquitas Atomizer, sitting on top of the Squid Industries double barrel. This is a strawberry peach limeade, and I'm hoping that that citrusy lime component kind of really helps out this beer and makes it a good pairing. I forgot which one to do first. Yeah, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. That, that's really delightful. It actually makes the beer taste a little bit more IPA-ish because that sweetness in the beer is kind of overpowered by the sweetness of this liquid, but the lime component of this liquid is actually really helping out this IPA. This is a pretty solid pairing, man. Yeah, good shit, good shit. Anyway, uh, huge shout out to Eric Vinyl and Vapor for sending me beer. Huge shout out to Eric Vinyl and Vapor just in general because I really like him, okay? I, I, I really... I really like him a lot as a human. He, he's, he sends me bands, he sends me beer, he, he sent me some liquid, and he's just all around a really good guy. So I'd like to take this little ending of the beer segment to just thank you to Eric Vinyl and Vapor for being one of the good ones. And you're forgiven for taking back Sunday. But this is good, uh, this is it. This is the end of my shooting day. I always finish with the beer segment, which is why we have to hop in a time machine to get here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm literally gonna sit up here, turn off my equipment, uh, enjoy this beer while double tapping some Instagrams. And that's what I have planned. But as far as the vlog goes, we're gonna go back downstairs and we are going to jump right into some vape mail. I got my Spyderco knife out. You know, I did that a little bit. I feel like I did that a little bit too close to my face. I, I need to be a little bit more careful with these knives. But I do have a bunch of vape mail here that we're going to open. And before we jump into any of this vape mail, there's always that one thing. There's always one thing in the vape mail that I want to set up and vape in this vlog. So keep that in mind as we're going through some of this. In fact, this first package right here is not actually vape mail. I mean, it's kind of vape mail. I ordered some, uh, I ordered some batteries from IMR Batteries. I went and bought some batteries on IMR Batteries. I just did a huge big battery clean out. I got rid of all of my old batteries and I bought like 20 sets of new batteries. They're all Samsung 25Rs or Sony VTC 5As, and those are my batteries that I've been using. And then one of my patrons on the Instagram live stream, a fella named Eric, had mentioned these other batteries, and I said, please DM me a link to those batteries because he was really talking them up and it's a battery I had not seen before and it's a, an, uh, it's a 2650 battery. Uh, he DM'd me on Instagram and said, this is the LG HG6 I spoke of in the live stream today. Battery life and power is much better than the iJoy 5 leg 2700 using it in the Deathwish, Deathwish bare bones mech right now. Really good. So. I, I clicked on the link and I bought some batteries because I'm fascinated by these and I would love to try them out. I've been really, really heavy mech user lately and I wanted a good, reliable battery that I could use in some mechs. I realize these are bigger sized batteries than an 18650, although you know I'm not sure how much bigger, but I bought four of them and they are LG HG6 26. 50 batteries. Oh, and they are blue. Yeah, this is uh, this is a bigger battery. It's bigger than an 18650. This is the new Sony VTC5A. Obviously, same height, different. I don't want to put them head to head. Yeah, 
different diameter. It's a little bit bigger all around. Cool, cool, cool. I'm excited about these batteries. I wanna try them out in some mechs. I got that Dreamer mech as well as the Broadside, which I believe both of these, I believe these batteries will work in both of those mech mods. So here's what I'm gonna do. Sorry, I'm just gonna open these up. I gotta get these on the charger so that I can try to use them as soon as humanly possible. But yeah, I bought four of them. I think they were like six bucks a piece on uh, imrbatteries.com. I have not looked at the battery mooch testing for these. Um, obviously, it's something I'll do before I start using them regularly. I'd like to know what battery mooch thinks of these, but I believe in the live stream, Eric said that this was a good battery. He said that he said that battery mooch recommended this battery. And obviously, I need mean, not. It's not that I don't trust you, Eric. It's just you know I, I like facts and I like to fact check. I'm gonna fact check you, Eric. But really, I would love to know what uh, what battery mooch thinks of these batteries. And if you're not look, if you're not subscribed to the battery mooch YouTube, be subscribed to the battery mooch YouTube. If you are a vapor, if you use mechanical mods, if you use regulated mods. Battery knowledge is really crucial for all of us to have, and Mooch is the one that's out there, and he's doing it, and he's just such a damn nice, knowledgeable guy. I'll put a link down in the description to the Battery Mooch YouTube because it's good. Hang on, let me get these on the charger. Thirteen percent, by the way. Those batteries came from IMR batteries, uh, charged up to thirteen percent. Look at that, IMR batteries even threw in this oddly sized. 2650 battery case. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, this is from uh, Cthulhu. Cthulhu mods. I always really look forward to the Cthulhu mod stuff. This is, oh, well, it's, it's another Squonk Genius, which, you know, not in love with the Squonk Genius. Maybe this is a better version of the Squonk Genius. I'll give the Squonk Genius another try. But what's in here is the Iris, Iris, Iris mesh. RDA, single and dual coil mesh RDA vape nation. I kind of wish that they hadn't put that on there, but it's cool, it's whatever. Oh wow, look at that thing. What, what? That has some crazy ass airflow on it. You gotta see this airflow. So that's the iris. On the outside, it's just lots and lots of holes. I have a feeling this is going to be a very, you know, adjustable, adjustable airflow on here. That's crazy. I'm not in love with the overall look of this. I'm not in love with these facets kind of cut out of the top right there. It's kind of a it's kind of a busy looking RDA. And of course, Ultim drip tip on the top because apparently we all love Ultim right now. Then there's that deck right there. Two posts completely opposite of each other. And I believe you're supposed to make a loop this way and then a loop this way and just stuff the center with cotton. Just a massive wad of cotton in there. I'm not a huge fan of using stainless steel mesh in drippers, so I remain cautiously optimistic about this dripper. Stainless steel mesh works amazing in coil heads, but I have yet to find a dripper or an RDA or an RSA for squonking that uses stainless steel mesh that I, that I really have enjoyed or, or fallen in love with. So there you go. And as I was taking off that top cap, I grabbed it and I, and I pulled it off like I would an RDA and the AFC kind of came off as well. And this clear silicone under here just got shredded. Like there's little bits of clear silicone like from this O-ring all over the place, all over my hands. It really, really got shredded. This AFC might need some... Uh, a some uh, lube. I was gonna know what I was gonna say there. I was gonna say it's lubrication. It needs some e liquid or some lubrication on here. Oh, yeah. Well, just be careful. Just be careful with that AFC. Anyway, that could be a thing. This could be a thing to set up. Uh, as much as I don't really want to dive into this right now with mesh and things like that, this could be. This could be a thing I set up. But there's two of them, so that means one can go into the $2 sale pile. I believe these are some coils. Yeah, these are J-Boy coils. J-Boy coils. Hooking it up with the coil action. So what, what do we have in here? These are some J-Boys. Uh, framed alien. Straight aliens. There's some stainless steel aliens in here. These are a series alien. 
alien. These are supposed to come out to 0.35. That's cool. 0.13 frame staples, some fused Claptons at 0.13. Cool. All right, cool. Well, thank you, J-Boy. You know, I had gotten some, uh, some J-Boy coils from uh, a, a different person. They didn't come directly from him. And so I didn't know what they were. And the coils I installed were like stainless steel 316. And maybe I just hadn't used stainless steel 316 all that much with fancy like alien coil builds. And I was kind of like, these coils look real weird. They don't look like normal, regular coils. And so J-Boy hit me up and said, hey, those were, I don't know where those came from. So let me send you some of my actual, actual coils. So I'm going to test out some J-Boy coils. And I got a J-Boy coils sticker. All right. Well, we got something from Geek Vape. Geek Vape. Geek Vape seems to be the newest Joy Tech. You remember when I couldn't have a vlog without having something from Joy Tech in it? Joy Tech was constantly, constantly sending me stuff. I haven't got something from Joy Tech in quite a long time. Oh, this is, uh, this is the, oh, th I know what this is. Okay. Okay, Geek Vape. Thank you. I know what this is. This is a uh, this is a black version of that blade mod that I did. That was the Starry Night that just looked horrendous to me. Just I think clown orgy was the word that I used. Which that is a that is a ridiculous way to describe something. But this is the blade kit in non clown orgy version. Much oh so much cooler, geek. So much cooler. So much cooler. So much cooler. Black. Gunmetal. Look at that. And it even feels soft. It feels like it's got like a... I've never felt this texture before on a mod. It is pleasant. It is pleasant, pleasant to hold in the hand. Oh, I wonder if those, uh, I wonder if those new batteries I got would fit in this. But anyway, th th uh, this is great. This is, this is very cool. I'm actually going to use this for a little bit because I really did love this mod. And uh, we'll probably eventually, I mean, this isn't something I'm going to keep. This is definitely something that's going to go into some sort of giveaway. In fact, I won't, I won't use the tank. I'll leave the tank, I'll leave this arrow tank all set up, even though I kind of would really like to use this aero tank. But no, I'm going to leave this aero tank all set up so that whoever gets it after me, whoever is the recipient of this from some sort of $2 sale, you can still have the full use of the tank. There won't be any grim green germs or grim green cooties on it, but I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of look really looking forward to using this mod on the reg. Well, we don't have a lot left, so it looks like I'm going to be setting up that damn Cthulhu. Let's see what else is here. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I don't mean that, that damn stupid, dumb Cthulhu atomizer. I mean it in like, fuck, that's going to be work. That's going to be a lot of shit. Like, uh, that's going to be installing stainless steel mesh in a, in a new configuration and trying to figure out wicking and like pushing all the wicking in there. And I know that the wicking has to kind of always be touching the stainless steel. So I'm going to try to build something a little bit more lower profile, I guess, so that I could, don't have to use so much cotton in there. Anyway, this is something else from Geek Vape here. This is the Loop RDA Innovative VW Innovative W Build Deck Surround Airflow System. Let's take a closer look. I mean, of course they have, of course, of course they have an Ultim drip tip on it. I mean, right? What, what's the last thing that came out of China that didn't have an Ultim drip tip included? I don't think you'd be able to find one. So here we got the Loop RDA. In fact, here's something that's funny. Uh, let me just show you. My uh, Loop RDA, the AFC is on upside down. That says pool <laughs> upside down. But well, you got this uh, sort of shiny stainless steel mixed with the matte look of that AFC. I think that looks actually pretty cool. Again, don't love that drip tip. It is big and ultimate and branded with geek vape. Airflow looks like it goes in and down, which seems to be a big trend now. And then there's your deck right there. That is a W-shaped deck. Interesting. I mean, that is that is actually really interesting to me. I can kind of envision how you would install your coils. I can kind of envision, ha, ah, this is going to be pretty good for blaying your juice because the airflow comes in from the side, and there's a big hole here that goes directly down to the base. So if you drip through this, your juice isn't just going to go out your airflow and out the side. It's going to go down. It's going to go past your airflow. Wow, that's actually... Uh, that's actually pretty interesting right there. Shit. As much as I probably should set up that iris, 
I would really, really like to set up this loop RDA. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. This is a fixed AFC in here. There is no getting this AFC off or, or taking it off. It is part of this top cap and is non, non-removable. But it looks like they set it up for single coil as well. There's a single coil option and a dual coil option on the airflow. I truly and honestly just want to feel this airflow. O-rings on the bottom feel pretty nice. Okay, 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 really, really smooth, good airflow, okay. Wow, really smooth airflow. Well, shit, I don't know what to set up. Uh, I don't know what to set up. This is going to be a thing. Uh, I'm going to have to ask Instagram. I'm going to have to ask Instagram, but let's open this last package. In fact, I'm going to put this picture on Instagram now so that Instagram can decide what I set up by the time I get to that point in the vlog. Okay, so the post is up on Instagram. I'm just waiting for people to vote on it now, which is fine because I got some time. I got to clean up some stuff, but not before we get into this last package from Plyrock. Plyrock sent this over and I have never seen this before or heard of this before. The, pl the Plyrock Zilla, the little monster 60 watt kit. Now I think Plyrock is part of Limitless. Mm, I'm not 100% sure, but this is the Zilla. Oh, okay. So, oh, that's interesting. It comes with a wake tank. So it's a kit that is a mod that is a little 60 watt mod right here that, wow, okay, that's uh, that's crazy. That's a crazy little 60 watt mod. Where, oh, that's all of the fire button? Okay, so it's got, let's, let's look at this. So this is the Zilla mod. You can see right there, it's branded Zilla. It's shiny with matte, rubberized matte accents on there. This is the big fire button across the front and it's got like scales down it as well the bottom there you go it's just for venting here's the up down buttons let's try to turn this on because there's no way to put in a battery it's an internal battery yeah five clicks turns it on there's your screen right there it's nothing uh super hd or revolutionary but it actually is kind of a very cool looking screen on there and it comes with a wake tank and this is actually this is actually an updated version of the wake tank because if you look at the AFC right here it's now a slot it was a slot before but the AFC was little a series of holes the opening has always been a slot and now the AFC is also a slot so I'm expecting some much better airflow out of this wake tank some improved airflow out of that wake tank like the AFC almost kind of looks like it's a little bit crooked on here here. Anyway, yeah, that's the uh, that's the Zilla from Plyrock. In fact, uh, whatever I set up today, whether it's the the Loop or the Cthulhu, maybe we'll just throw it on this Zilla right here. Interesting, interesting little kit. I didn't know. I didn't realize that it comes with uh, it comes with a wake tank, which is great. I mean, that's very cool. It even has a wake tank certificate of authenticity included. Serial number. 21,229. Menu button, fire button, increase button, micro USB charging port. It's kind of a bummer that they put the micro USB charging on the bottom. That's kind of one of my least favorite things ever of all time is having that on the bottom. I get aesthetically that you don't maybe want to look at a micro USB port, but having it charge and having to be on its side or something like that, eh, that's also kind of a bummer. Anyway, okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to clean up the very large mess that I have created and we're going to come back with something to vape. Well, well, that'll be decided by Instagram. Everybody's voting on Instagram right now and they're the ones that are gonna decide what I set up this week between the loop or the Cthulhu. So let me do that. Let me clean up and let me set something up and dude, we'll be right back. All right, well, the post went up on Instagram and every vo everybody voted, which one should I do? And I genuinely, I, I genuinely couldn't believe it. I thought for sure the Iris Mesh RDA would have a lot more hype behind it than the Geek Vape Loop, but Instagram voted and I always wait. I don't make a decision. I don't call it good until over a thousand people have voted on it. Over a thousand people voted on it and the Loop won out. 69% of the people that voted said they wanted to see me set up the Loop as opposed to the Iris Mesh RDA. And you know what? 
Hey, that's totally cool with me. So what I did is I went ahead and built the loop. The deck is a, a little bit weird. Uh, I think Geek Vape kind of messed this deck up just a little bit. I love the idea behind it, but I think they put the screws in the wrong place. They put the screws on in the side. So when you're using a wire that is wide like I did, I used the J-Boy coils. I used these J-Boy coils right here. These are Nichrome 80 framed aliens. Uh, 30 gauge over, uh, no, 38 gauge, 38 gauge over 30 gauge, three millimeter, five wraps, 1.13 ohms. Hi. I can't talk. Uh, I shouldn't have tried to read all the specs on this. Anyway, they're Nichrome 80 framed staples or framed aliens. Good Lord, bro. Framed aliens. And they are wide. They're a, they're a wide coil. It's a multi-core coil. And the way that this Geek Vape loop is set up is it has big slots. You got to pre-clip your leads and pop your, pop your leads in there into these big slots. But the screw comes in from the side. It doesn't come down on top of your coil, your wide coil. It doesn't come down and hold it into place. It comes in from the side. So you're either going to smash your coil and ruin the cores on the inside, or you're gonna screw it in and it's gonna twist your coil and press it up against the side. And that's exactly what happened with this. I installed it, I screwed down all the screws, and both of my coils went all funhouse mirror because the leads got twisted by the screws going in sideways. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's easy to kind of get your tool, straighten them back out, start glowing them, pinch them and, and, and kind of push them into place. I eventually did get them in there perfectly, glowing real evenly right out of the gate. There was very, very little fiddling involved with these J-Boy coils. Um, I wicked it up and, and I wicked it incorrectly. This atomizer needs a lot more wick than you think it does. This atomizer has a very deep juice well, very deep juice well, and the deck itself is raised up a little bit from from that juice well so you have a real long distance right there it's almost almost like a tiny tiny little rdta because that juice well is so deep in there so i had to leave my cotton much longer than i had originally anticipated i'll show you a picture of it but i left my cotton long that's how that's how long i left my cotton and then i just folded it over and you kind of fold them over and pop them down into the deck and even at that length with that long of cotton on both sides sides when I pushed them down in there they only they really only touched barely touched the bottom of the deck it's not like they're wadded up down there they're just going down and barely touching the inside of that deck I will say though that this particular RDA is a it is a joy to just bleh your juice in. You can go right down the middle. It hits that little house. It hits that little A-frame. It soaks your coils. It soaks your wicks and all the excess. It doesn't come out the airflow. It all collects down in the bottom and creates... Like I said, it's like a little RDTA type of situation on there. Anyway, I have taken zero toots on this, so we're just going to have our inaugural toot on this, and we're going to leave the airflow wide open for the first one. Cheers. Here's to you. Here's the loop. Okay, so uh, it's a little loud. It's not excessively loud at all. Full open is very very full open, very, very. It is quite open, very smooth, really swooshy as well. I don't, I don't get, I don't get that sponge thing. For a while I was obsessed with like, oh, it feels like you're breathing through a sponge. There's no sponge breathing in this particular RDA. In fact, I'm going to close this airflow down a little bit. I'm going to close this down about halfway. We're going to go about that far right with it right now. Uh, these came out to 0.12. I have it set to 88 watts on this guy. This is a guy, sorry, sidetrack, uh, CKS, VHO. I don't remember the name of this mod. I 
think it's on, I think it's actually on the 510 here. Yes, this is the Cloud Kicker Society Via, Via 200 watt box mod that they did with VO Tech. It's got the VO chip on the inside. Uh, it's really reliable. I've just, uh, it just never, it just never quite got its own YouTube review. But I mean, it's cool. It, it, it's mostly plastic. It's a dual 18650 for a dual 18650. It's pretty big. Okay, it's not about that. We're talking about the loop and I just closed down the airflow. So let's give it another try. Yowza, that is great. That's a really good vape. I, I'm, pff, I'm really enjoying this. You know, sometimes geek vape can be a little hit and miss sometimes. You know what I mean? A lot of Chinese companies can be a little hit and miss sometimes. Occasionally, they'll just release a product that is, it's just the worst. You go, why? Why does, why does that even exist? And then every once in a while, you get this cool loop RDA from geek vape that's, completely different. This is a completely different deck design than I have ever seen. Completely different airflow system than I have ever seen. It's got these big fins on the side that direct your airflow right underneath the freaking coils, man. I got this loaded up with uh, Smacks uh, Lick It just because it's it's a juice I really like and, I, and, I, and I've been vaping it a lot lately. So I kind of wanted to see where the flavor is on this and that airflow going right underneath your coils, man, it is, it is good. The flavor is quite solid on this. And I also like that my AFC is upside down. Is it supposed to be upside down? It says loop, but it's upside down. It should say loop this way. I don't know if they did that as like a gimmicky, is like a gimmicky marketing thing, but I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. And the RDA top cap does that thing that I love that is actually pretty difficult to do is where they have those little tabs. There's two little tabs on the deck that lock into tabs on the top cap. So you can just take the top of this and unscrew it off of your atomizer. You're not relying on O-rings to tighten it down or unscrew it from your mod. You have those little tabs. And I think that's great. Like I said, the AFC doesn't come off of here, but it's glidey. It's nice and smooth and it seems to be fairly stiff. It stays in position. Anyway, we're going to leave that closed off a little bit. And of course, the first thing I did was get rid of that Ultim drip tip. And I put a stay gold DHD, you know, goon nub tip on there. And already, already I like this atomizer more. Wow. Wow, wow, good. Wow, good. Looper, I'm impressed by that looper right there. I'm going to use it. I might even use that on a mech mod because it's 24 millimeters. I might throw that on a gold mech mod. I think that might look cool af. Anyway, that's it. We're done with that little first impressions after the vape mail. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to keep this train going. I got another atomizer sitting right here. It is time for retro vaping. So I actually put this little atomizer on that, uh, on, what was it? The Zilla. I put this on the Zilla from, uh, from Ply Rock. And the atomizer that we're going to be talking about today is just something that uh, I found in my retro vaping area. And I think we've actually talked about this before on the vlog, but it's been a while since I've tried this out. And the reason that I got this particular one out is I was thinking back to like my past retro vapings. Like what old stuff have I used already? Ready. And I was thinking about like, oh, I've done some old mech mods. I did this, I did that. We did the Kanger thing. And I'm trying to think back like years worth of retro vaping, right? Years worth of retro vaping. And I was like, remember I did that Aeolus. I did the Aeolus light. And then the Aeolus led me to this. And I thought, wow, I'd like to try out that support again from Watofo. Uh, this came out... This came out, well, I don't know exactly when it came out, but I remember reviewing it sometimes towards the middle of 2015, and it was Watofo's RDA that was a little four-post deck on the inside. I have a very simple Ruby Roo round wire build in here. Uh, it's, I did, the, I did the honky thing. I did the thing with my throat. Did you hear it? Why does that happen? Anyway, this is 
Anarchist wire, 24 gauge Anarchist wire. It's a nine wrap, at least I think I counted correctly, a nine wrap around a two and a half millimeter came out to right around 0.3. It's freshly wicked up with some cotton. I grabbed some, uh, I grabbed the, the little last of my Arcadia juice just because ah, it's kind of a flavor I've been craving again. So I'm just gonna juice these up, but if I remember correctly, I used to really like this Sapor atomizer. I really liked that it was a able to blay your juice and never, ever, ever worry about it leaking. It never leaked out the airflow because the airflow was set up so high. And I apologize to anyone that's watching the vlog right now going, oh, uh, Grim, I think you actually did the support like not too long ago, like maybe like five or six months ago. Sorry, um, this, then, then this is going to be a rerun for those people. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna need a lot more than seven watts. Yeah, 0.3 right on the nose. So I'm gonna turn this up to about 50 watts. I think that's where I wanna rock this. Vapors. And it had a pretty interesting design. You would put this little barrel over it right here and you would line up the slot with your coils and then on the top cap all the innovation in this atomizer was in the top cap this little top cap right here has its own directed airflow slots so it goes in and then boom like straight down at your coils and when you get that direct airflow to coil you know mixture that's that's when you get a good vape that's when you get some really good flavor air always takes obviously I mean, obviously air always takes the path of least resistance. So if you didn't have these channels in here, kind of directing the air down at your coils, if say this was just a slot, that slot would just go in, not near your coils, and would pull some of the air from just inside the chamber rather than pulling the air directly from your coils. At least that's the way that I can explain it in the least scientific way possible. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure these coils are nice and wet, don't want any dry hits. So like I said, 0.3, 50 watts, Watofo Sapor. Cheers, here's to ya. Okay, maybe it could use a little bit more power. That's right, this Zilla mod caps out at 60 watts. So we're gonna run this at the maximum wattage that this mod will allow, which is 60 watts, 0.3, 60 watts. Let's give it another try. Much, much better. In fact, this could go, I, I feel personally like this could go maybe a little bit warmer, but we're gonna leave it on this mod for now. But yeah, it still works. It still vapes real well. I have vaped a bunch of this Arcadia juice. It, it tastes good in this atomizer. It doesn't taste amazing, but it does taste good. This atomizer had good flavor. It also had a fairly smooth feeling airflow in there. It's not really turbulent, but I would describe this airflow as sharp. I, I get really, I know, I know, I get really obsessed with the way airflow feels, which I realize is something that you can't even really quantify. Like to me, this airflow feels sharp, but I, I would be I would be hard pressed probably to find another vapor that would pick up the support and go, oh yeah, that airflow is real sharp, Grim Green. It just feels sharp to me. It doesn't feel smooth. There is a slight little like, very slight whistly sound, not like a distinct whistly whistly sound, but there's sort of like a high pitched uh, thing going on in here. I don't think this had a removable, oh, it does have a removable drip tip. Shit, I wonder if that's goon compatible. I wonder if that's an 810 size in there. Uh, well, while that still looks cool, no, it's definitely not 810 sized. It's its own special size. I actually wanna see if any of these are in stock anymore. Where can you get a Watofo Sapor Atomizer? Looks like Element Vape still, oh no, Element Vape has them out of stock, but they were $13 on, Adam, on, uh, on Element Vape. Well, it looks like Fast Tech. It looks like Fast Tech is the only place to get this right now. Authentic Watofo Sapor RDA Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer. $13. No, it's out of stock there too. Okay, okay. Well, this, the Watofo Sapor might be the atomizer that is just lost to history. I can't find it in stock anywhere. It's out of stock on Fast Tech, which when, when something's out of stock on Fast Tech, that means that it probably has just dropped off the face of the planet. 
yeah. Wow, that's nice. This Arcadia juice tastes pretty banging in here. Oh, here it is in stock on Watofo.com. Well, it's it's not the cheapest R- RDA out there. Uh, they still have it for sale. It's 30 bucks. So if you're really interested, if you want to check out something from the past two years ago, which isn't really, I mean, in the vape world, two years ago might as well be three years ago. I mean, in the vape world, two years ago might as well be 20 years ago. But the Watofo Sapor RDA still for sale on Watofo.com, $30, which honestly, I feel like at this point, it's been out for two years. I feel like maybe they've made their return on investment on this particular product. Maybe we can knock that price down to like, I don't know, 20 bucks, maybe even like 15, 10 bucks. I actually think with Tofo might sell a couple of these atomizers if they knock the price down to $13 and had them readily available. Anyway, with Tofo, Sapor, it was a banging little RDA. I loved the hell out of it and it still is holding up real well. Flavor is nice. It's just got that sharp airflow, you know, a sharp. I'm, I'm obsessed with airflow. It's sharp airflow. And there is actually another YouTuber out there, uh, Olin, Olin? No, what's his name? I can never remember his name. He's got some YouTube videos um, that I've been meaning to watch and meaning to get caught up on, but he, he delves really into like airflow and how airflow affects your vape and how airflow hitting the coils and it affects your vape and it does all this different stuff. And he gets into it. He got into it much deeper than I did. He actually explains things much better than saying, oh, it feels like you're breathing through a sponge. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. That was retro vaping with Tofo Sapor. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we got for retro vaping this week. Uh, What I want to do is we're just going to keep this train going. It is time for some getting to know Grim Green with a package included. Spoiler alert, it's going to be about Star Trek. All right. Sorry, I had to lose the hoodie. I was getting sweaty in the armpits. But we're here to do some getting to know Grim Green. And if if you're if you if we're for friends on Facebook, uh, and you, I mean I said this in a YouTube video as well. I've recently discovered eBay. You guys, I've recently discovered eBay for real. I've, I'd never really used eBay before, especially any selling anything or, or bidding on things. But I recently discovered eBay, so I'm going to be opening this eBay package as part of the getting to know Grim Green segment. I post a picture on Facebook of my Jetfire toy. I bought a Jetfire G1 original transformer uh, out of the packaging because it, it's much cheaper to go out of the packaging for a lot of these, especially if it's a toy that you want to play with. Like, yeah, I want to get out Jetfire and I'm going to fly him around my office and I'm definitely going to transform him. So even if it did come in packaging, I probably would have just ripped that open anyway and just just to play with it. But here's what I bought on eBay and it relates to Star Trek and it relates it relates to my good buddy Scott. I had a buddy in high school named Scott and he was, you know, he's just he still is. He's just one of the greatest guys. He was just friends with me instantly. In fact, we I became friends with this dude before school even started. He, he moved to Lake Tahoe uh, right before seventh grade. And uh, he, he was a neighbor of our babysitter's house. So me and my brother, this is too long of a story. He was a neighbor. He was a neighborhood kid in the neighborhood. And I met him the summer before seventh grade. And it turns out that he was, uh, he, he, was a, he was a nerdy dude. He was an artist and he was a nerdy dude like me. And he liked Star Wars and Transformers and Robotech and Star Trek. All of my friends in high school, we really had like a really nerdy sci-fi fantasy thing going on and we were all really big fans of Star Trek. Anyway, I'm getting to the I'm getting to the package, I promise. Oh. Oh, I'm so excited about this. So this is what I bought. This is what I bought on the interweb. You see this? This is ridiculous. So I already have one of these, but it doesn't work anymore. This box kind of smells like cigarettes. This is a Star Trek The Next Generation Klingon Disruptor. And so I had one of these way back in the day in high school. Yeah, I I bought one because that's what I do. And my buddy Scott also had one. Oh, here it is. Oh, look at you, Klingon Disruptor. Oh, I'm so excited. 
I am so excited. This is one of the coolest weapons in all of Star Trek is the Klingon Disruptor. Oh no, I don't have any batteries. Okay, I gotta run upstairs and grab a battery. Ugh. So I literally only have one AA battery inside my house right now. Okay, that's not completely true. And it's inside this microphone right here. So I'm gonna have to pillage one from my Zoom mic <laughs> because I really want this Klingon Disruptor to work. Oh, it took two, it takes two AA batteries? Oh man. Uh -huh. Okay, well, this doesn't quite stay shut like I want it to, but... It works, it works, and it works well. So, obviously it's cool, it makes a sound. The second button goes, which is, uh, you know, not quite as triumphant sounding as the toy laser guns as a kid was like my favorite thing of all time. That's all I ever wanted was a space ray gun, laser gun that just made just made spacey, lasery sounds. I'm kind of bummed that the the bottom doesn't stay on very well. Yeah, this bottom is is definitely definitely broken. I bought a very broken toy that I'm gonna have to super glue. Yeah, my little uh, this little contact came out of the bottom of it. So, well, there you go. I guess that's what you get for buying things on eBay. It's okay, I need to take the batteries out of here anyway because my Zoom mic is much more important. But anyway, so here's back to the story. So me and my buddy Scott, huge Star Trek nerds, I mean, unbelievable Star Trek nerds, we both had Klingon disruptors. And what we would do is we would take them to school. This is high school, mind you, high school age. This must have been a sophomore year of high school. So however old you are when you're a sophomore, I think 15, I think we were both 15. Anyway, we would take our Klingon disruptors to school. I would keep it in my backpack and he would keep his in his backpack and keep in mind this was the 90s <laughs> and we knew each other's schedules so basically the dorkiest thing i ever did was we would like hunt each other in between classes i knew what classes he had he knows what classes i had and we would always pass each other in the hallway in between classes and attempt to shoot the other person <laughs> This was, this was the game we played in high school. And of course, now, obviously, in school, they would never allow something like a Klingon disruptor to be used just, you know, in between classes, friends shooting lasers at each other. It was fun. I mean, it was real fun. It was real harmless fun. And it was, uh, I had a good time with it. I, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I'm a huge Star Trek The Next Generation fan. I don't love, so if we're talking about Star Trek, I don't love... Of Enterprise. Um, I've only watched like a few episodes of it and I went, no, nah, this is not doing it for me. But I like the original series. I love Star Trek The Next Generation. I like Voyager a lot. I like Deep Space Nine a lot. I love, love, love the new T Star Trek Discovery show on CBS. So good. And I also really even like the J.J. Abrams reboot movies. I like all three of them, even Into Darkness, which everyone considers to be the worst one. I think it's really good. And I think Star Trek Beyond was amazing. That was an uh, unbelievable Star Trek movie. Anyway, so that's what I bought on eBay. It's a Klingon disruptor from Star Trek The Next Generation because I am an insanely insane nerdy fan of Star Trek. Actually, let me show you something else I have on my shelf. I bought this. I bought this Federation phaser right around the same time as I bought the Klingon disruptor. Although I always liked the Klingon disruptor a little bit more just because of where the button placement was. The button was back here and you could kind of go and the button placement on this was was weird. It was this little spoke right here that you kind of had to hit correctly to make it work, but it made the authentic Star Trek sounds, but I just don't have any uh I don't have any batteries that'll work in here. I've put new batteries in here and it just doesn't work. The inside here kind of got a little bit weird, a little bit corroded in there from having batteries in it so long. So I just now keep dead batteries in there so it can maintain the the feel. You know what? 
the, you know, like the weight, the feel of a, of a Star Trek, uh, you know, phaser. Even had this little switch right here to switch it from stun to kill. Wow, oh, that's so cool. Anyway, that's what I bought. That's what I bought on eBay. That's a little bit of me. I realize I didn't answer a getting to know Grim Green question, but I did provide a pretty cool, cool little story about me and my buddy Scott shooting each other with phasers in the hallways of our high school. Nerd. That that's uh, that's what nerds do, man. I am definitely okay with it. So anyway, let me put this Klingon phaser away. But generally in this segment, if you're new to the vlog, um, I, I answer questions from subscribers, uh, getting to know Grim Green questions. In the past, we've talked about all sorts of things from tattoos to being in bands to to bands that I like to movies to to entertainment and all of this ridiculous stuff we've talked about Star Trek before we talked a lot about Star Wars before and just other weird random stories as well included in there so if you have any getting to know Grim Green questions that you might like to see answered in this here segment in the vlog send them on over to Nick at GrimGreen.com just mark your subject getting to know Grim Green if you have any questions hopefully not too intrusive Last week, we talked about Casey Pickle, and that was, you know, just a little bit, you know, a little bit intrusive. I'm okay with that. It's a little bit intrusive. And this week, obviously, we're talking about Star Trek and the Klingon Disruptor, and it's always a good time. So what we're going to do right now after getting to know Grim Green, uh, I'm going to clean up this mess a little bit, but it is time for some viewer mails. All right, well, we got some viewer mails here. First viewer mail comes from a fellow named Chris. Uh, Chris wrote in and said, Hey, Nick, a big fan of yours. I just want to say thanks for what you do and all the support you're giving everyone in the vape world. If possible, a shout out to the vape shop I work at here in New Brunswick called New Beginnings Vape Studio. And to Logan, also a huge fan of yours way up north, and Janet and Trevor, owners of the shop. Thanks again for the RDA and all you do. Keep on vaping. Chris C. Cool. Yeah, per perfect. Simple straight to the point definitely Chris I'm gonna shout you out I'm gonna shout out uh, new beginnings vape studio which is a very cool name for a shop new beginnings you are shouted out as well as Logan Janet and Trevor you guys definitely definitely shouted out Chris awesome Quick and easy. Thank you so much for writing in. Got another email here from a fellow named Alan. Alan wrote it and said, Hey, uh, what's up, bro? I've been doing some experimenting with my chubby gorilla bottles because the leaking from them drives me insane as well. I'll attach a pick with what I have found works best so far, but if you cut the tip real low and at an angle, it stops it from doing its volcano thing after you drip. Hope this helps. Let me see this picture here. Where is it? Where? Oh, it's attached. Oh, yeah, he did. He cut it real low and at an angle. That's that's interesting. Should we try that? I don't have a juice that I'm actually regularly uh, vaping out of a chubby gorilla bottle, but I've got this. This is the uh, random juice tasting from last week. Mellow, that mellow juice that was the melon ice cream, the melon milkshake or something like that. I need to do some science here. I don't have anything to drip this on, so we're gonna have to drip it into my uh, garbage bag here. But first things first. Okay, how does he have it cut? Real low and at an angle. So I'm going to give it like this, I guess. That's real low and at an angle. Hope I didn't mess this up. Well, that might have been, uh, I might have got carried away. That might be too low and at an angle. But if I drip some, bleh, uh, yeah, that actually kind of helped. Um, it drips when you just tip it upside down, which is good for dripping. You let go, what happens? Yeah, it doesn't, it really doesn't volcano out. That's all Chubby Gorilla needs to do is make the opening a little bit wider for drippers. Or we could just go back to using uh, glass 30 mil dropper bottles, which are my favorite. Well, there you go. How does it work with uh, leaking like inside of the cap or anything like that? I bet it leaves a bunch of juice in there because the tip isn't, uh, isn't being plugged. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Well, there you go. That's kind of a little bit of a fix for those chubby gorilla bottles. Thank you, Alan, for sending that in. Anybody else out there, more than welcome to, to give it a shot. Report back with your findings. Alternatively, if anybody else has any like uh, 
tips for chubby gorilla bottles and how you use them or do you modify them at all i, I would be open to all suggestions because i just get real bored of how they leak uh, i got another email here from a guy named ty ty writes in and says hey nick quick question since you are a juice manufacturer what would be the reason a company would reformulate a successful selling juice line thanks um uh wow i don't even know that's a that's a that's a kind of a huge question. Um, th there could be multiple things, pardon me, involved with why you would reformulate a successful selling juice line if um, you would reformulate it if you were changing manufacturers, possibly depending on who owns what as far as like recipes go. Sometimes um, big manufacturers retain the recipes for a juice line. And if you're moving manufacturers, you might have to re reformulate a juice line. If you are testing your liquids and something comes back with like uh, diacetyl or acetylpropanol, you know, a AP, diacetyl, AP, something like that, where you had to remove a component of your juice, you could reformulate it that way. It could just be up to the juice manufacturer's discretion. Maybe they have a juice in their lineup that they really don't like, but they see potential in and they, and they could reformulate it that way as well. I'm honestly not 100% sure what you're referring to. I don't know. I don't know of anybody that has reformulated a successful selling juice line. Or honestly, it could just be, you know, a, a bad uh, business decision. It could be a company, I mean, this is getting out there real into hypothesis land, but it could be that a juice company is selling juice and they're not happy. They, they feel like they should be selling more juice. So they go, well, let's reformulate our flavors and make them better and sell even more juice. That that that's, that could be an option as well. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure, Ty. There is a lot of reasons, I guess, why someone re would reformulate a successful selling juice line. I wouldn't. If I had a successful selling juice line, I certainly wouldn't reformulate anything, but I don't know. That's just me. I guess everybody runs their businesses differently. I guess that's the ultimate answer, isn't it? That everybody runs their businesses differently. Got, uh, got another viewer mail here from Zach, fellow named Zach. Zach writes in and says, Hey Nick, my name is Zach and I've been watching your videos for two years now. Your videos uh, really helped me quit smoking. I personally only smoked a few cigarettes in my life. I'm 19, but I smoked a lot of Swishers and other cigarillos since I was 16 years old. I switched to vaping in February of 2017, which makes 13 months smoke free at the young age of 17. And, and the only reason that I'm reading this viewer mail right now is Zach started smoking real young. I mean, really very young, 16 years old. Fast forward 13 months later, and now he's no longer smoking any swishers, any cigarettes, or any cigarillos because of vaping. Technically, Zach is underage. He had access as an underage person to both tobacco products and vapor products, somehow managed to get his hands on both tobacco products and vapor products. And if I had my choice, I would much, much, much rather Zach go for the vapor products than to fire up another Swisher or a Cigarillo. And I'm not doing this as like a big, uh, bold political statement or anything like that. I certainly do not support any underage vaping, especially for non-vapers or non-smokers. But I do think it's a little bit ridiculous that we would ask an underage smoker to continue smoking until they're old enough to buy vape products. And that's the that's the eternal struggle, right? No underage vaping. Of course not. Of course no underage vaping. I don't want anybody underage vaping. But if there is a smoker who is 16 years old, I think that that smoker should be allowed to vape. And that's uh, and that's just my weird outlook on things, I guess. He says he was diagnosed with hypertension, which is something a lot of middle-aged men are diagnosed with. My blood pressure is now back to normal and my hi hypertension has been decreased due to vaping. Even my doctor recommends vaping. I just wanted to say thanks and let's keep on vaping. If this is included in a vlog, I will probably scream like a fangirl. All right, Zach, I'm holding you to this. 
If you screamed like a fangirl, I, there better be video of it. I'm just kidding. You don't have to film yourself screaming like a fangirl. He says, also, if you could shout out my YouTube channel, that would be amazing. I make gaming videos and other funny stuff. My YouTube channel is Your Mom is a Fish. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. The YouTube channel is Mr. Your Mom is a Fish, not Your Mom is a Fish, although that is really funny. It is actually Mr. Your Mom is a Fish. Anyone, feel free to go Google Zach, and uh, congratulations. You know what I mean? Uh, at whatever age, as long as you got away from traditional tobacco cigarettes, uh, I feel like that's a win regardless. Got a viewer mail here from Doug. Doug writes in and says, Hey, Nick, uh, my name is Doug. You may use my name in any portion of the attached video. I have two questions for you. I didn't see. I didn't. I don't know, I don't know if there was an attached video there. Maybe there was, and I... And I just saved it. Anyway, uh, he says, I was recently thinking of buying the iJoy Capo Squonker kit. And then I watched your video on the Kanger Tech Dripbox 160 and decided to buy the Dripbox 160. Did I make the right choice? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, th I, I never used the iJoy Capo Squonker kit. I've never physically used it. I've never physically held it or used it in any capacity. The only thing that I have to judge the iJoy Campo, Capo Squonker kit on is the sheer amount of emails I get of people complaining about their iJoy Capo Squonker kit. It's a lot. I get a lot of emails talking about how th their capo is broken, their capo's not worrying, they dropped their capo and it cracked or it broke, and, it, and, and all I've heard is negative, overwhelming negative feedback. I don't, I don't think I've ever received an email on the subject of the iJoy capo where someone had said, hey, Grim, just want to let you know I got my iJoy capo squonker kit, and it, it's amazing. I love it. It's, it's really durable, and I think it's going to be the last mod I ever buy. I've used the Kangaroo Tech Drip Box 160, and it's good. It's a it's a very solid, uh, regulated squonker, and there aren't a lot of those out right now, and, and it's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a solid one, so I think you made a pretty good choice there. Uh, he also asks if Darth Vader, Darth Maul, and Kylo Ren entered a battle royal, who would win? That's too, you can't, it would be Darth Maul. I mean, obviously Darth Maul would win, right? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't think it would be Kylo Ren because he's still fairly new to this whole Sith thing, you know. I, I feel like I feel like Kylo Ren's skills might not be quite as high as Darth Maul, although Darth Vader is the most powerful. The, like the most powerful Sith. Vader is Vader is Vader. You know, Vader is Vader for a reason. Okay, fine. I'm going to say Vader. I'm going to go with Vader. Between Vader, Maul, and Kylo Ren, I'm choosing Vader. I think Vader would win. Anyway, Doug, thank you so much for sending in an email. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we got time for one more. Let's do one more. I got an email here from Cole. Cole writes in and says, hey, Nick, my name is Cole, and I got a quick question for you. I watch all of your videos, and I make it to the end of every vlog, and yes, you can use this in a video. I just want to know where you got those black ceramic tip tweets tweezers from with the flatter, wider tip that you use in most of your videos. I can't seem to find them anywhere. Thanks for what you do. And yes, let's keep on vaping. Um, yeah, absolutely, Cole. So he's talking about... Where did they go? I was just building with them. Where did they go? Oh, here they are. He's talking about these guys right here. Yeah, I got these. Uh, these are my favorite tweezers. These are my favorite tweezers in general, ceramic tipped or otherwise. These are just fantastic tweezers. They have lasted me, I mean, almost two years now. The thing is, I don't know where you can get these. I know where these came from. There used to be a company way back in the day called My Vape Kit. This was basically a US version of Coilmaster before Coilmaster kind of took over and started selling their own kits directly from China. There was an American company back in the day, My Vape Kit, that was selling them, you know, uh, in the United States as an American company. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, you know, Coilmaster just ran them out of business. I mean, that, that's capitalism. If your business doesn't succeed, then, you're, then your business doesn't succeed for whatever reason. Sorry, I'm not going to go on a capitalism tangent right now. But these came from a company called My Vape Kit. And this is the only place that I've ever seen them. I got one singular pair of them. And with the day that these tweezers break, 
are the day that I am going to be real bummed. These are just uh, these are just really fantastic tweezers that I I don't know. What have I said so far? I love them. I love these tweezers. They came from my vape kit. To answer your question, long story short, Cole, I don't know where you can buy these tweezers, but these came from my vape kit. I don't know if you could search on eBay for like old my vape kit stuff. I don't even know if they are for sale anywhere. We could do some Google Foo. Let's see. My vape kit. Uh, Mist Hub. Nope. Oh, let's see. MyVapeKit.com. Show me potato salad. Nope. Okay. So MyVapeKit.com does not exist anymore. The company does not exist anymore. I, I don't know. I don't know where you can get these, but, uh, but good luck on your search, sir, because these are the best tweezers I've ever used. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up here for the viewer mail segment. If anybody else out there has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here program, I've got a lot of them sort of piling up right now, but I could always use some more. If anybody has any viewer mails that they want to see answered in this here vlog, send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, viewer mails, and it will get uh, it will get read and filed uh, accordingly and maybe used on this here vlog program. I really, uh, I, I've really been trying my best here to, to, to respond to as many people as I possibly can. Grim Green here, it, it, it's a one-man show. What you see is what you get. Everybody that works for Grim Green is in this room right now. So at the end of the week, when I open my emails, I'm not trying to brag or toot my own horn or explain how hard I work, but I get, you know, anywhere from 60 to 70 emails every single day into my Grim Green e email inbox. And so in my limited amount of time, I really try to reply to as many any people as I possibly can. If my answers are brief, I apologize. That's really just a time thing. I try to reply to as many people as I possibly can. This doesn't even include like business emails. This doesn't include, you know, Twitter or, uh, you know, Instagram DMs or Facebook DMs or all these other ways that people can get a hold of me. This is just my nick at grimgreen.com email address and my email address inbox runneth over. So if you're out there and and you're waiting on a response, I apologize. I really am trying my best out here, but if you want to send in a viewer mail that could maybe get read on the show, well, that's a whole different ball game. That's easy to take care of. That's that's me reading them and putting them in the vlog here and answering them on YouTube, which is, I, th I think, a much better format than just, you know, black text on a white screen, but I've gone on that rant before. Anyway, nickgrimgreen.com, viewer mails, feel free to send them in. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do right now is uh, it is time for a very random juice tasting. Well, we're down to my last few weeks here in the office, in my old office, and so uh, I just kind of wanted to use this camera angle again, because I really like it. I wanted to use it for the very random juice tasting, so that's what we're going to do right now. Shifted everything back over. We're here for the random juice tasting, and the juice I have to taste this week comes from Freeman. It's because I've been vaping so much of that Freeman 1885 custard that I really wanted to give one of their other juices another try. A lot of people have been saying, oh, if you like that 1885, you should try this or Freeman's this is really good, and Freeman's this is really good. And I decided to grab out Fall Spirit. I don't know anything about this juice. I don't know what the flavor profile is supposed to be. So this is going to be an adventure together. Oh, this is, uh, says right here on the bottle. Pro probably could have looked at that. This is uh, FreemanVapeJuice.com. This is a caramel apple. Caramel apple. Okay, after that savage raspberry cookie, a caramel apple, I think is, uh, I think it's going to be right up my alley. Anyway, we're going to be tasting this today on the Ghoul RDA, which again, I, I, I'm really just using this for the juice tasting because it does deliver some, some very nice flavor, but it is also a single coil, which when you're tasting a lot of juices, really ease of wicking comes into play with that, with, within your workflow. You want to have something that you can easily wick. This happens to be an atomizer that I can easily, easily wick. But before we get there, we're going to give this chubby gorilla bottle to get open. Oh, yeah, there we go. Just takes a little bit of elbow grease, right? Interesting. I'm hoping for a green apple sort of caramel flavor here. Let's give it a little bit of a knuckle test. Oh, yeah, dude. 
I think I'm gonna be real into this juice. This, this, okay, okay. I'm gonna save my, I'm gonna save my, my opinions until after I actually vape it. But the knuckle test was was very successful. Vapors. All right, we got the ghoul sitting at a 0.23. I believe this is a fiends. Uh, alien in here. It's a 0.23 and I've got it set to 60 watts, which I am naming. That's This is the Ruby Vape. Kent's Vape is like the low resistance at a really high wattage above 100 watts. And the Ruby Vape is around a 0.23 at about 60 watts. And the only reason I'm making that comparison, and I don't want to go on too big of a tangent here, but on the Vape Tour, Ruby was in the back of the RV editing video. I was sitting shotgun, but Ruby had left her setup in the little cup holder right there. It was her Gummy Gore Axis Vapes M17, an original recipe recoil, an anarchist pink lemonade, and I could not stop vaping it. All that was on the inside was a simple Ruby build, and it came out to around 0 0.2, 0 0.23, and she's had her wattage set at about 60 watts, and the flavor was unreal. It, I was I was blown away. It is a flavor build through and through. So I kind of feel like a 0.23 at 60 watts is more of like a ruby setup, a more flavorful setup maybe. So now that we're done with that complete sidetracked tangent, let's try this out. All right. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna reserve my judgments until afterward, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna vape with this for just a little bit, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. Okay, this Freeman Juice Fall Spirit it, it, it's good. Oh, it's so good. I haven't had a really good, good, good green apple flavor in a very long time. Kind of like those uh, level IQ blueberry pods remind me of the old pure smoker blueberry that I used to love so much. This juice very much reminds me of another old pure smoker juice called Apollonia that was like a green apple flavor that I just loved. I just worshipped this juice and I have not had that good of a green apple in a very long time. This Freeman Fall Spirit is, pardon me, this Freeman Fall Spirit is a delicious green apple flavor. All I get on the inhale is just green apple. Just a mountain of green apple. Exhale it is very much like a sweet green apple, caramely type of flavor, but I don't get that caramel on the inhale. I only get that caramel on the exhale. The caramel in this particular liquid is a little bit more uh, subtle. I feel like it's in there at a much lower percent, which is great because what they really did was allowed that green apple flavor to really shine. It's just a sweet, natural green apple flavor. It doesn't taste candied in any way. The sweetness mostly comes from that caramel that's in there. The green apple in this is dude, dude. Well, this is good. This is fucking good. Great. That's it. Uh, I, I like this juice. I think it's great. This is a this is a this is a really good juice. This is a juice that I would buy. It's good. Well, there you go. Freeman Fall Spirit. I will throw a link down in the description. In fact, I haven't even looked to see how much this juice costs yet. So let's do some let's do some Google Foo. So yeah, you can grab a one twenty mil for twenty bucks, and they have thirty mil bottles for eight ninety nine. That is some some very reasonable pricing from Freeman Vape. And what I'm going to do is put a link down in the description. Of uh, to where you can check this juice out if you are interested. I haven't had all of the flavors. I've had the, what was the first one I tried? I don't remember the first one I tried. The strawberry, uh, it was like a strawberry rice pudding one that was, it was good. It was fine. The 1885 is banging and this fall spirit so far is my, is my favorite of the ones that I've tried from Freeman. So awesome. Awesome. I just can't stop vaping it. Good, so good, all right, cool, cool. So we're getting down to the end here. We're gonna wrap up this vlog. We're gonna do my favorite comments of the week and maybe we'll just begin and end the vlog with this particular camera angle because I wanna keep this train going. Let's, let's do favorite comments of the week.
All right, so we got some uh, we got some favorite comments of the week here. Uh, comment of the week number one from a fellow named Michael. He just said, "Vlog day means more to me than soaking my ball sack spine after a long day." I don't, <laughs> Michael. I don't know what that means. Um, I've never soaked my ball sack spine, and uh, I mean, if you have any articles or like, uh, you know, how to's thing for that. Uh, it seems like something you might really enjoy. So if you want to get me privy to soaking my ball sack spine, I don't even know what that means, dude. Um, we also got a comment here from uh, vaping biker vaping biker left a comment last week. We had the viewer mail where, uh, the gentleman from the UK was wondering how the TPD affects his, uh, YouTubing, which you know, the TPD, we talked about it in the news. The TPD is changing, but Vaping Biker chimed in and said, Ooh, I just heard my name, LOL. To answer the chap's question, while the TPD covers the EU, each country enforces it differently, like it wasn't confusing enough. In the UK, reviewing is fine as it's discussing a product. However, Mr. Grimm is correct. If it's a sponsored or paid for advert, it puts a different spin on it over here. Advertising is heavily restricted in the UK. However, it can be different in different countries. We shouldn't be sponsored by any vape company over here, and you won't see a UK reviewer having sponsored videos. Your government's approach to the TPD is something that you're going to have to refer to. However, IMO, independent reviewing, is generally okay if vaping is allowed in the country. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Straight from vaping biker's mouth. Thank you, Dean, so much for leaving that clump comment and clarifying it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Dean the vaping biker. He, he is one of just the most genuinely good and kind people that I've ever met. And uh, I, I am super bummed out that I'm not going to get to hang out with him at Vape Jam UK this year, but that just means I'm going to have to come back to the UK at a different time because I really want to hang out with Dean the Vaping Biker. I <laughs> got another comment of the week here from uh, Mr. X. Mr. X left a comment and said, Justin Bieber just released a tank with smoke. They're calling it the Big Baby Bieber Tank. <laughs> That's good. The big baby Bieber tank. I uh, I would buy that. I'm just kidding. I, I wouldn't buy a smoke tank. <laughs> and Matt, Matt left a comment on that uh, smoke, uh, no, not the smoke, the sense, the sense arrow kit, the one with the LEDs. If you haven't watched that video, you, you should definitely go out, go check out that video for that ridiculous mod. But Matt left a comment and said, this must be for those people that like to eat Tide Pods. Oh, burn too soon yeah well people were eating tide pods which i, I don't care that makes you an idiot and carl Car you know that video got a lot of a lot of interesting comments carl left a comment on the same video on that sense arrow kit video and he said it's hard to express how much i don't want to buy that mod <laughs> yeah well you know, that's the thing. It's uh, it's certainly not going to be for everybody, is it? And then from that same video, the final favorite comment of the week from Andrew, he just left a comment and said, you can use those lights to contact aliens, LOL. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the signal. You didn't know? That's the signal. The smoke sense arrow is what summons the aliens to come and take all of my vape gear. That's why I haven't been using it. It's a big conspiracy, folks, and this goes deeper than you think it does. Obama's the devil! Sorry, I got into a little bit of a Alex Jones thing there. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this vlog up. We're done with my favorite comments of the week. It's been, it's been a great vlog, everybody. It's been a real great vlog. And let me take one quick look around, make sure I didn't forget anything. Cheers, everybody. Stay hydrated. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think I got everything I wanted to in this vlog. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone that makes it to the end of this vlog, you, you are just my favorite people. And if I ever meet you in real life, uh, real life I do owe you a hug. I also dispense crisp high fives if that's what you're after. But anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. There's going to be a lot of changes coming up over the next few weeks here in the grim green world. I'm moving. I have to pack up my office. I plan on doing a final office farewell video tour. But I am going to be moving. I'm not going to have all my camera equipment with me all the time throughout this moving process. I'm also spending some time in New Jersey at the end of March, and I'm also 
spending time in the UK in April on my birthday for Vape Jam UK. So there's going to be a lot of content, but it's going to be a lot of changes as well. And I'm really excited for everybody to see the new office once it gets all set up. I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, last quick update. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Sorry about that. But anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to edit some video and I am going to vape the ever loving F out of this fall spirit juice. One last time. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping.